In this video, we have yet another day of enhanced risk for severe weather across the southeast with all three modes of severe weather, including damaging winds, large hail, and the possibility of more tornadoes across the southeast. And this is actually coming across on the heels of a very active day yesterday. Preliminary reports are up to 50 seven tornadoes took place across the southeast yesterday and widespread rain reports of 161 rain reports so far welcome back everyone good afternoon this is your april the 6th update so hit the like button if you hadn't already and subscribe i do daily updates on this channel to keep you ahead of the storm so let's get right to it let's take a look at the culprit of what's happening uh this afternoon that you can actually see this very dynamic uh, swirl up here into uh, wisconsin on the northwest side of that that's actually dumping some heavier snows into portions of uh, minnesota but that comma q shape fields all the way down into the southeast and that sets the stage with that upper trough that's going to be diving in through uh, into this afternoon for more storms that's going to be breaking out over the southeast and this is what the radar could look like about three o'clock this afternoon with this very dynamic swirl up here in this wisconsin to the northwest of there you got the snow breaking out into portions of minnesota as well as uh, southern canada here but on the tail end of it you got the storms breaking out into, into kentucky into tennessee back into portions of Minnesota, Mississippi here, back into Alabama, into Georgia, and even in the Florida Panhandle, we'll start getting some storm activity in this afternoon, and this will spread, start spreading into South Carolina. But as we get deeper into the evening hours, that swirl is just really just kind of expand. It's gonna be setting up shops still over Wisconsin, dumping some colder air on the backside into portions of the Dakotas, into Minnesota. This will actually feed into even into portions of Iowa here. You can't roll out some wet snowflakes even in the portions of, of, of the Ohio Valley into uh, Michigan here. But on the tail end of it, you've got all those that, that warm sector back into Georgia with the storm still trailing back behind it uh, with a, some very heavy rain and to some storm activity as we get deeper into the evening hours. So definitely be concerned and stay weather aware and get a way to have warnings this afternoon because this could be yet another very active day for uh the southeast but those storms will continue to lift up into portions of west virginia getting into pennsylvania just stronger storms by then nothing on the severe side but as we get into tomorrow that same system just continues to shift off the east coast now it's going to be over portions of the florida florida getting into central florida with yet another slight risk for severe weather in central Florida and al along the coast here in the portions of uh, North Carolina getting into Virginia, these have a very, very isolated tornado threat, but not nearly as widespread of what we saw the last couple of days. This is mainly going to be a, a, a damaging wind threat, and you could be seeing some kind of pocket change hail with some mixed quarter size hail uh, mixed in there, and that'll be the day tomorrow on on thursday but on the back side i mentioned there's actually some colder air can to contend with and as you wake up on friday friday morning april the 8th there's widespread 20s across the upper midwest getting into the plains here that spreads all the way down into portions of new mexico with 30s even in far south as the texas panhandle but widespread 40s across uh, much of the south and much of the ohio valley and to the northeast that's on Friday. So as it underneath that, there's that swirl just really kind of expands by then. And like I mentioned, it's bringing down some pretty cold air for April standards. And we could be looking at some snow showers start to break out into portions of uh, more into Wisconsin. And you can't roll out these snow showers, at even some maybe some wet flakes into portions uh, of, of the Ohio Valley. No, no accumulations or anything, but you can't roll out at some of these wet snowflakes as that colder air will continue uh, to drag down. And you can see out here, out here in the, uh, the Pacific Northwest, we got that atmospheric river coming back into play into portions of uh, British Columbia and to Washington and Oregon with more rain on the coastal areas and then snow in the upper elevation areas. But as we get into that Friday afternoon, you can take a look at the temperature anomalies as we're, we're going to be pulling 15 to 20 degrees below average temperatures for a good chunk 
of the Ohio Valley while the West Coast warms up in a big way with those rapid warm warmth into uh, California, into the Intermountain West. But all that changes. It's just going to be the complete opposite as we get into uh, next week. So as we do that and look at that, look at the map as you get into that Friday time frame, look at the trough. That's a massive trough really digging down, bringing all those colder air anomalies. So that cold air will shift all the way down into, uh, into the southeast. By, we, by the time we get into a Friday afternoon time frame with a very dynamic system drawing down that cold air as that, that the, um, the, the severe threat will be over by then and that'll be replaced by much cooler conditions. But it's a quick shot of cool air before the big rapid warm up takes place for next week for much of the east and the northeast. But by the time we get into Monday time frame, that's when things actually start to be really interesting and actually concerning for a widespread event. This is what the map will look like by, by Monday. So as this clears out, we've got a huge rapid warm up and a good chunk of the east and the northeast with well above average temperature anomalies. We've got this little short wave that's digging all the way down into the Baja of California. That's actually lifting across Texas again into Oklahoma as well as into Kansas as yet we have another tr massive trough really starting to dig in off the west coast and this is going to be setting the stage for our severe weather threat going into next week but on Monday we're going to have to be dealing with this little short wave and that's going to kick off our severe threat on Monday and portions of the planes in fact this uh, the storm prediction center even this far out has already introduced a slight risk for severe weather with that short wave diving into portions of kansas getting into oklahoma and well as north texas with yet another round for severe weather as we get into the late afternoon hours into the evening time frame that's not until monday april the 11th but as we transition into Tuesday, you can actually see this trough really starting to take shape now. Now that becomes even, even bigger across the West Coast. And as it continues to dive south, that'll bring down that colder, colder air anomalies, bringing out some snow underneath it at the surface and some much needed rain moving back into California. But that short wave down here into portions of Kansas and to uh, Oklahoma and Texas really doesn't go anywhere on Tuesday. It's going to be a slow mover. So again, yet we have another round for possibly a severe weather in the warm sector. You can actually see, look at the surface map here on the height anomalies. There's the warm sector and the massive warm up that's going to be taking shape over the Ohio Valley into the Northeast uh, along the East Coast for next week. At the same time, we have yet another, that massive trough that's going to be digging down off the west coast and there you got the southwest winds pulling up that all that uh, all that moisture from the pacific as well as the gulf of mexico and that is going to be setting the stage for yet another round for severe weather but look at the temperature anomalies man that's a rapid change from widespread well above average temperatures that even even 90 percent well above average i mean we're talking portions of pennsylvania in the 80s for high temperatures by then with just the complete opposite out west with widespread chilly temperatures and a lot of freezing temperatures coming back on the table for early next week along along the west but underneath that we underneath that off the surface low it's going to be cold enough to be ringing out some snow in in, in their mountain west so you're talking a good chunk of snow in portions of idaho into montana back into wyoming that actually gets into portions of uh, Colorado, but out ahead of it, you got that short wave again that really doesn't go anywhere, even on Tuesday time frame. And yes, there is another chance for severe weather across Oklahoma, portions of M Missouri by then, and to Arkansas again, back into portions of North Texas and Far East Texas as well, with that very active short wave that's going to be coming across. But look at the temperatures by the time we get into next. Wednesday, April the 13th time frame. Look at all the red. That is widespread 20s into British Columbia and Canada here, but much of uh, the Dakotas into Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, Nevada, and even into California at up their elevations, widespread 20s in the Sierra Nevada. That actually digs down into portions of northern 
uh, Arizona and in even northern New Mexico with freezing temperatures. And that's some cold stuff for April standards. But you can see where the warm sector is, right? I mean, these are low temperature guys. You're talking 71 degrees. That's definitely not normal, right? 71 degrees for your low temperature in much of Texas, much of Oklahoma, and even those widespread mid 60s get all the way up into Kansas. That just gives you an indication there's the warm sector. So after two days of severe weather on Monday and Tuesday, you're still in the warm sector in a lot of the same places as that very dynamic trough will start to dig across and look at the height, the 500 millibar height, a, 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 a low level jet that's gonna be really starting to dig off. When it turns like that, that's a negatively tilted trough, guys. That is the, the most serious trough you can get. With it going negative tilt, that has the most lift associated with it and tapping into that warm sector that spells trouble for more severe weather but this time it actually i think lifts further up north into much of the plains and getting as far north as oh, iowa by then that's not until we get into that uh, wednesday time frame because of the dew points the longer the dew, the higher the dew points are able to climb the further north it's able to climb you get past 55 dew point that spells trouble, especially with that massive negatively tilted trough that's going to be entering the midsection of the country by then. We got widespread 70s for dew points down here in the south into Texas and Louisiana. But those mid-60 dew points lift all the way up into Arkansas, Missouri, even extending into Iowa by then to Illinois and to Indiana. Yes, these folks are going to be probably introducing severe weather impacts by the time we get into next Wednesday time frame with that massive negatively tilted trough that's going to be moving across the country but underneath that we've got some cold air right I mean underneath that surface low this is a 991 millibar surface low by then to the northwest of there all those colder air anomalies are going to be able to ring out more snow of portions of Montana into Wyoming, back into Colorado, even some heavier snows with convective banding into portions of the Dakotas, back into Minnesota again. But there's the tail, right? You got all the tail, the trailing tail. And in the warm sector, you're still going to have more severe weather moving across into portions of the plains and the southeast. But look at the jet as it rapidly starts to deepen and move across by the time we get into next Thursday, April the 14th time frame. And look at the lift goes all the way up into Canada, guys. So you got the warm sector out ahead of it. You got a massive negatively tilted trough. That is very concerning for a widespread severe weather outbreak for next week as this system will move it across from west to east. And look at the surface map with this very nasty squall line by then could be setting up shop extending all the way into portions of louisiana back getting into uh the tennessee valley here all the way up into uh illinois getting into even into portions of uh you know michigan here with the uh, with even the possibility of even some severe weather extending even that far north as this very dynamic dynamic system will be moving across uh, from west to east throughout the week and just on the north side you still got the cold sector and going to be ringing out some very heavy snow into portions of southern uh, Canada uh, by then but look at the temperatures by by uh, Thursday April the 14th and in, into the uh, you know late afternoon hours widespread 80s across the southeast but those 70s extend all the way up into Kentucky 80s in west virginia 80 degrees in pittsburgh that tells you you're definitely in the warm sector because that's not normal right you got plenty of warm air to contend with uh for next week as that massive trough really hits and clashes but look at the dew points this is definitely something you haven't seen so far this season these dew points are going to be lifting all the way up into uh illinois indiana into the ohio valley well into the 60s so that puts you that puts the severe threat lifting much further north than what you've seen at late so it's not going to just be the southern plains and the southeast for next week i think most some of this severe weather will extend in further north into the midsection of the country and this just extends further north into the ohio valley and getting into portions of the mid-atlantic states as we get into that late thursday 
uh, time frame, but that will continue to shift into next Friday with that massive squall line moving across and we should be off the east coast by then with all that snow breaking out on the northeast <laughs> man so we have a very active week and a definitely a concerning week uh for next week i will definitely be fine-tuning this as uh, as it gets closer so i appreciate you guys uh watching do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and i'll have another full breakdown at, for tomorrow morning on tomorrow morning's video so be up be sure to tune back in and check me out there and catch me in the next update where i protect you before and after the storm.